Welcome back guys. This is part two of my making my renaissance fair costume. Making a new renaissance fair costume, I guess. So in the last one, I made the skirt. That's done. We've moved on. Now we're at the bodice, which is the most exciting part. I am so ready to do this. Okay. So to begin with, I, once again, disclaimer, I am not a seamstress of any sort. I don't know any technical terms. I don't know anything. I just kind of do it. So be prepared because again, this is going to be kind of tragic to watch. Um, but I have my fabric here. Once again, we went over it in the last video, but let's do it again. I have my dragon fabric and I'm not really sure if I'm going to use this. I don't know. Like it has cool dragons on it and everything, but it doesn't, not that I'm trying to be period accurate. None of my stuff is period accurate, but this feels really modern. So I'm not sure if I want to do that or not. I have my black fabric, which is what my bodice is mainly going to be out of. And then I have my soft fabric for the inside of my corset. And let me find the plans for my corset that I did in the last one. Once again, this is roughly what we're trying to make. The top one right there. So we'll see if it looks anything like that by the end. I'm really confident. I don't know why, but I am. So here's my plans. I kind of sketched it out and labeled where I want things to go again. Who knows if it'll end up like this. We'll see at the end, but I keep changing my mind. I really, I was bound and determined to have a dragon on it this time and at the beginning, but now I just don't know. So, I am gonna be using a pattern. And by using a pattern, I mean I'm going to be looking at the pattern, but will I be taking it suggestions? Probably not. Because this is what I've done each time and it's worked fine so far. So let me show you the pattern. Once again, here is the pattern for the bodice that we're gonna use, this one up here. These are really pretty over here and down here. And I wanna make those at some point. I'm just really comfortable making that one. And I like a bigger, like, covers more area bodice because I feel like they really grab the attention. So I just want to make another one of those. We are going to modify it so it's not as swooped at the at the bottom like this one that I made from that pattern. This is like made from the pattern and it's got the like curved bottom. I think I want to make my bottom like, you know what I mean? Pointed is the word I was looking for. Here is my pattern. These are the steps and it looks kind of scary, but honestly, it's not terrible. It just takes a really long time. So I feel good about it. I don't have all the materials to make it how I want to. So this video could just be me making like the bodice part without all the detailing, like the strap sleeves and the shoulders and everything. Or I might go to Joanne's in this video and do that. Who knows? We'll cross that bridge again when we get there. This is definitely my most favorite part. So we're just gonna get to it. Let's get started. Okay, first step is going to be pinning my pattern piece, which these, I just fold the fabric under half. I fold the fabric under, I fold the fabric in half and then I lay one of these on top and then I use the fold line as the middle so I don't have to mess around with getting these exact and it being a little bit wonky, so. I'm going to pin that to this piece. Also, this pattern, I forget every time that I make this, which it's only been two times, I guess I helped Katie one time, so maybe three, is that this is a size 10, and I am not a size 10. I made it the first time as a size 10, and when I laced it up on the sides, it was completely to one another, like there was no room for it to cinch I guess it just met at the sides and then I couldn't make it any tighter so I definitely want to size this down just a little bit so that there's enough room that I can kind of my waist and also this black fabric it's just again regular cotton fabric but it's really thin and I haven't worked with something this thin it has no stretch thank goodness we know how that went so it should be fine. I'm just interested. Anytime I work with anything that's slightly different than what I've worked with before, I get nervous. So, here goes nothing. Okay, and now that I have that pinned just enough so that it won't 
be moving around while I'm cutting. I am going to use Lucy's handy dandy supplies and one of them is this pizza cutter. I think it's Fiskars. Is that the brand? I don't know. It's basically a little pizza cutter for fabric, I guess, and this thing is great. If you're working on small things like this, I would not recommend this for a skirt because obviously you have to have something underneath so you're not just cutting straight through your countertop. So I put a cutting board underneath this and my corset is small enough that I can use it and have that underneath, but this thing works like a charm for just smaller projects where you just need to do detail cutting, especially in these crevices that I have to cut up and then I have to cut right back on the patterns. It's really nice versus scissors. You have to kind of maneuver a little bit. They're a little bit clunky. So this is awesome. <laughs> forgot that I was doing it pointed instead of curved so we may have to move to a different piece maybe we can work with this we'll see no I'm gonna start over <laughs> I'm gonna do this right again Okay, we've just cut the first piece, recut the first piece to make it the right shape. And, oh wow, this is awesome. You can't see anything. Um, okay, so that is basically what the bodice front is gonna look like folded in half. And as you can see, I cut it to where it's pointed here instead of rounded. So hopefully that looks okay. I'm a little bit suspicious, but it should be fine. And the edges are pretty rough, but Honestly, all of those are gonna be folded over in the end, so you won't see any of it. It doesn't have to be too particular. And next, I'm gonna keep this pattern pinned to that piece. I guess I could have just showed you that. Wow, anyways. I'm gonna keep that piece attached because I'm going to fold this in half and cut another piece just like this for the like interfacing fabric that's in between. Obviously, this isn't interfacing, but whatever. So I'm gonna cut a piece that's the exact same as this. But it's the exact same shape as that one out of this. Okay, sorry, I forgot. I actually needed two of this tan piece that I just cut that's the exact same as the black piece for the front. So I cut two of those because, and bear with me, we're gonna get theoretical here. I have to stitch all three of them together, but the boning is gonna go through the two tan parts because that's the thicker fabric. If I put the boning in between just one layer of this tan and one layer of this black, the boning is actually kind of sharp, even though I file down the ends of it, it's a little bit sharp and it would probably just start cutting through the threading of this black fabric. So I put the boning in between a second and third layer instead of in between the first and the second. So with that being said, now is one of my favorite parts where I get to sew these three pieces together and with the pattern, it gives me lines on here, if you can tell. There's like lines that tell you where to put the boning up. So I stitch channels that are like a rectangle that the boning can go through. So now I just need to doodle, draw where <laughs> the boning is gonna go through. And then once we get all of that sketched out, we will start sewing. <laughs> So this is what it looks like all laid out. There's one layer of black and two layers, two layers, please, of tan. And I think I am going to iron this top layer. I've never done that before because I've always had pattern fabric, but this is going to be, I don't think it's ever gonna pull to get that crease out. So I am going to iron it first because obviously after that, there's gonna be a ton of stitching in it. There's gonna be boning in it. It's never gonna be able to be ironed again. So now is my time. Okay, this is where I get into drawing the lines for the boning. I'm also gonna draw this line right here. That's where we're going to stitch together this bit so that it creates a dart up to the bodice. So, 
like I said, I've got to size it down a little bit. And these dots right here are helpful because that's where you stop the boning. That way you have room up here that's not just boning all the way up until the neckline. Here's the corset with the lines on it. Obviously the black is on bottom now. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my God, that looks terrible. And yes, you would be right, but it's really rough. And honestly, I'm just doing the channels by eyeballing it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just gonna put a panel over top of this anyways and stitch it all up. So all of this is internal. You will never see this again by the end. So let's pin it and then let's start sewing up the channels for the boning. Okay, it's time to start sewing, and I know I mentioned in my last video that I might want to do silver thread, and I think while that would be beautiful, that I am just not technically skilled enough to make this silver fabric look pretty. Like, my lines are going to be a little wonky, so if I do silver fabric, that's going to be really obvious. So I'm just going to do black on the black, and I think that that'll still be pretty. Like, if you look up close, you'll be able to see the detail, but if you look too close, don't look too close. So... I'm gonna start stitching. I already have the black on the bobbin too, so that's super nice. And then I'll let you see whenever all of the channels are done. Oh, and also I like to start with the, the middle channel first because this fabric is a little bit stretchy and while it's pinned, if I start on one side, by the time I get to the other side, since it's stretchy, there'll be way more fabric like hanging over the edge on that side and it will all have shifted that way versus if I start in the middle, then the fabric stretches outside so the hangover is going to be equal on either side and also one thing to keep in mind katie learned this the hard way last time is that give yourself enough room on the channels so that putting your boning in is not harder than it needs to be because it's already so rough on your fingers to push it through the corset that if you make the channels really tight you're going to be pushing that boning and it's going to cut your thumb if you're pushing too hard so be careful. You need to make your channels big enough and you should start in the middle. Okay, so I've just gotten to the top. This is the top of my corset. I've gotten to the top of my channel and something I like to do is I go a little bit past, a few stitches past where I want my channel to end. And then I go back and do a few stitches back. And then I go up again not all the way to where I put those, just enough. And then I lift the foot, and now we're gonna make the top of the channel. You probably can't see anything, sorry. Make sure your fabric's not caught anywhere. And then I like to make sure it's really parallel with the top of my corset. Then I drop the foot again, and I go forward. So I create the top of the channel and then I go backwards all the way over where I just stitched. And I really like to do this because that boning, like I said, is so sharp that I like to create an area that's like extra fortified, I guess, so that the boning cannot escape it. You cannot just rip through those layers. So I feel like extra stitching really holds that boning in there. I don't know if it actually works. I've never not done this. So actually that's not true. The first time I didn't do this and yeah, that's where I got this. So then obviously I like to stitch back forward, stitch back, stitch back a few times, stitch forward, and then just finish going down for the whole channel. So yeah, that's just a little tip that I learned through the process of making this. Okay, so that's my very first channel done. If you can tell, yeah, you can tell. It's a little bit bunched, but when I stick that boning in there, it's gonna fill it and that those crinkles will go away. It's also just based on the way it's stretched. So I'm gonna do all the other channels and then I'll show you how it looks. All right, as you can see, all of the channels have been put into my 
bodice and they do not look super even. As you can tell, these two are really close together compared to these two and then this one kind of curves a little bit. But luckily I did it in black fabric so you can't tell. If I would have done that in silver, it would have looked pretty tragic. And it's kind of pulling weird, but whenever I put the grommets in and it's pulling sideways across, um, across my body, it will not look like that. So that's good. The next thing I'm gonna do, well, the first thing I'm gonna do actually is like I predicted, the stretchy fabric has pulled further outside now because it was bunching sideways and it has hangover now. So I'm gonna cut off that excess because whenever I fold this over, I do not want to have to fold over that much of the thick fabric too. So I'm gonna cut that down a little bit. And then we are going to flip it over. And the next step is to fold this like, like a sew. So and make sure these two sides are like even. And then this line goes on the other side too and that's where we're gonna sew it up and then that will create the dart and then once those two are sewn together, it'll kind of lay like that a little bit. That part won't be bunched obviously, but this part down here will. So it'll lay to where these become even and that's that line for the corset. So yeah, it'll look something like that on both sides. So let's get to it. As you can see, I have just stitched up the darts and this is where it starts to get exciting because the shape is starting to come together and you can actually see results. So next we have to do the boning, which is one of the more tedious parts other than just the boring stuff of kind of stitching up and down and up and down and up and down over and over. The boning is a little, not tougher, it just, it just takes time. So for the boning, obviously I need boning. And this is just the stuff from Hobby Lobby. It is $2.99 a pack. And I have two half use packs and then a brand new pack for this. And there's boning in the front of the bodice and the back of the bodice. So don't forget to buy enough for that. And basically I measure out this from each, enough for each channel. So like from where the channel starts to the bottom and then I cut it there. And then I will take my, this is a sandpaper like block. I don't know. I'm sure it came from Home Depot or Lowe's. I'm not sure. I think I bought it for painting one time or something. And basically what I do is if you can see, oh my gosh, not this. Okay, yeah, you can see the boning. These parts are super sharp on the corner. Those will cut right through my fabric. So what I do is I take my block and I just shave on the corners until this is rounded and all of it is filed down so it's all super smooth. So whenever I put it in my channels, it doesn't just immediately cause the friction on just moving and walking and stuff to cut right through the fabric. So I do that for every piece and there are seven pieces on the front and five pieces on the back. So that's pretty tedious, but it's definitely worth it in terms of longevity of my corset. So I'm gonna get to doing that. Okay, and then the next step before I put in the boning that I've just shaved down is that I sew up just a few stitches. I sew up the end of this just a few stitches horizontally across there so that when I'm sliding the boning up through the channel, it doesn't just do that and come straight out of its little casing. I don't even know if you're supposed to keep this casing on the boning, but I feel like it adds one extra layer that the boning would have to cut through in order to escape my corset. Obviously I'm really worried about that. I don't know, but <laughs> I do that so I just, throw a few stitches uh, at the top and then I channel it. I obviously don't have to do it at the bottom because it's pushing against it on the way up. So it's not gonna come out the bottom. And then when you put the boning in the corset, make sure that the curve of the boning, cause it always comes curved, is the curve is against your body, I guess, like that. You don't want the curve like this because and obviously your corset's gonna sit weird on you, but all the stitching will pull this back. So that way it's what gives you that like really kind of cinched look, like that pulled tight look. 
And again, I'm putting this in the layers of the two tan pieces of fabric, not in between the black and the tan, but in between the two tans. Okay, this is where you start to just have to really trust me. I know you probably didn't up until this point, but I'm really gonna ask for that now. Okay, <laughs> this is what she looks like now. Perfect. Um, this is because all the boning is in there, but obviously whenever it's pulled tight up and it's pulled tight across my body, it'll like fashion itself to me. Also with time, the boning starts to unfurl just a little bit. So that helps too. The next step that we're gonna do is, also the boning is cut to where it's like this far, like half an inch deep inside of this. So that now, oh gosh, look at how thick that's about to be. When I curl that over to stitch. Good work, girl. Okay. So around every edge, I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to stitch up that. And then I'm actually not gonna do the step that I would normally do next. The step that I would normally do after that one, when I fold all these over so it's a prettier edge, is I would cut another piece of this tan fabric and then I would stretch it to the back of this to cover up all this ugly interior. And I would fold that in this way so that they would both be against each other, you'll see at the end. But I'm not gonna do that next. Next what I'm gonna do is when I fold all of this over at the bottom where this point is, I'm going to create little ruffles because in the picture, let me find the picture. Okay, in this picture, you can see it's got these little flaps at the bottom. I don't know if I wanna do the little flat flaps like that, or if I wanna do little ruffled semicircles along the bottom, along that V, there would be two ruffled semicircles coming underneath. I'm not sure yet. I like how dynamic the little flaps are with the points at the end, but I feel like it would be a lot easier to do ruffles. So honestly, I'm gonna sketch it out and see which one I like better, and then we'll move from there. I think that I'm gonna do it either just in black as well, or I may do it in the striped, not striped, the black and white kind of checkered fabric, but I don't wanna do too much of that fabric and make it overwhelming. So honestly, we'll just see where we end up. Okay, quickly, I improvised. I, that's not even it. Where did she go? Oh my gosh. Who knows? I'll have to find it. But anyways, I cut out a little piece of this um, kind of checkered fabric, whatever that's called. And then I cut a piece of black fabric that's the same size on the back. I'm realizing now I didn't have to do that because you're never going to see the back of this, but whatever. And then I used the black bias tape and I just kind of put a trim on it. And then this is going to go, I wish that this would lay flat so that you could <laughs> kind of understand, but this is going to be that bottom flat part that's down here. You'll see it when I stitch it on. But anyways, so I'm gonna make two of these so that they sit right at my waist. And I'm a little bit worried because these are kind of looking race car. You know what I mean? So I'm not really looking for NASCAR. I'm more looking for like Jester, Harlequin, something like that. So we'll just see. I was just gonna eat these off camera, but these are the impossible vegetarian chicken nuggets. And these are so good. They taste like actual chicken nuggets. So 10 out of 10. Hello, I'm back. I'm excited because it actually looks good. I didn't think it was gonna turn out well. Okay, obviously it's still really bunchy because it has no grommets or anything to hold it down, but take a look. It's really flattering with my sweatshirt. We take a look. Now it has, oh, awesome. You can't even tell against the brown. Anyways, it has these little like flaps at the bottom. So that looks cool. I've never had a corset with that. So I'm excited. It's looking pretty good. Like I said, once I add the grommets everywhere and the backing that I'm about to do, it will flatten out some. It will actually sit against my body, which is going to be much better. So now I'm going to cut a piece that fits around the back, like basically all the tan stuff that you see. I'm gonna cut a piece just about a half inch wider than that. And then I'm gonna fold it inside to where um, I can stitch it on the back of this so that it covers up all of this interior stuff. I'm also gonna stretch that fabric pretty tight. So whenever I stretch that fabric, it's gonna pull this back straight and then that will help as well. Okay, I just finished pinning the back piece to it. So now you can see all of those ugly pin marks are covered up and everything. And the front is still 
the same. So now I'm just going to stitch along this seam all the way around and then I will add the trim on top and then the grommets will be the last thing for this front bodice piece. And then we'll start on the back. I probably won't do grommets today. I'll probably do them tomorrow because today's because it's already nearly five and grommets are super loud and I have to go down to the parking lot. So I'll probably wait until tomorrow during the day. And I want to do all my grommets at once. I don't want to have to do like 10 and then 10 later and then four more later. So we'll do that at another time. Hello again. It's time for the trim along the top. So basically what I did is I cut a piece of trim that's going to go all the way across the top of the corset like that. And... I'm going to just sew it all along with silver thread. I also added that same silver lining down here. I wasn't going to, but then I realized I'm gonna have to on the back, on the bottom, down here, and then I'm gonna have it up here too to match this. And I wanted it to look cohesive, so yeah, that's where we're at right now. This just needs two grommets up here and then four or five grommets down the side. I haven't decided yet. And then I'm a little bit worried because this fabric is so thin and this fabric on the back is so stretchy that I'm afraid that this top is gonna stay bunched up. Can you see that? Yeah, it like pushes forward and that's not what I want. I need it to lay flat. So I'm trying to decide if I need to do something about that. If I need to like add a strap here, an extra strap or something to like pull at this up so that it doesn't lean forward like that. But we'll figure that out once we do all the grommets. It may not even need it, but I'm thinking at this point it might, it might need it. So I think tonight I am gonna start on the back of this. I don't know. This was a lot of work. Obviously I started at like 10 30 and it's 5 20 now so it has been a long time just to have this but it's looking good i'm liking it i think honestly it's kind of looking almost cheapy almost like costumey not costumey in a good way costumey in like a i don't know not not so good kind of way i wish i could find some fabric like playing cards or something i think that that would be really cool on this because i kind of want it to be like magician-y kind of like the night circus so i'm thinking i might add some beads i don't know if you can see on this fabric ooh, this ribbon up here it's got these little loops where it comes down i kind of want to add like a little drop bead to each one of those just to like or maybe like a little string of beads and they get longer almost like a necklace like they're long in the middle and then they get shorter on the sides or something i think that that would be cool and make it a little less like i don't know party city which is crazy because i put so much work into this and it's looking like it's not even looking homemade it's looking like i bought it for five dollars so all right i have in fact decided to start on the back of the corset i have also decided that it's going to be this pattern because if i don't do it this pattern it's going to look really boring because it's going to be a black back of the corset and then it's going to be my blue underneath and then it's just going to be my blue skirt so the black and the blue and the blue is going to be kind of boring so i decided to add a pattern so when you see me from the back i don't just look boring and like i forgot to pay attention to that part of my costume so i cut one piece of that and this is what the pattern looks like it's really simple which is awesome because this part goes a little bit faster and then I cut two more of these and obviously all these pieces are folded in half so they actually look like this so it will go on the back of my back of my back awesome so now I'm going to pin these all together and then once again like I mentioned earlier there is boning on this so again it gives you the lines where the boning is supposed to go so there's five pieces of boning that go in this one. I'm hoping that I have enough because I only have one roll of boning left. If I don't, I'll go tomorrow and get some. But yeah, I'm gonna pin and then I'm going to draw and then I'm going to make channels again and then I'm gonna bone it. It's basically just the same as the front. So I might honestly just wait until the end to show you, but maybe I'll give you some updates. Maybe I won't, we'll see. Okay, I took a day break in between sewing, but we're back. I was gonna give up, but then I decided not to. So <laughs> I am now gonna do the grommets. I have put all of the trim on both this piece and the front part of the bodice. And then now to do the grommets, basically, I have these big grommets. 
you can see them. And what I do is I feel where the boning is on the back. You can kind of actually see too right there. And then for this one, I'm only going to do four because I only did my four on my last one and it works great. So normally I would do five, but for this one, since the grommets are so big, we're going to do four. So what I do is I just like put it on there and this is the smallest part of the grommet. So that's the size it needs to be. So I just trace the inside of that grommet four times spaced out right here. And then I cut holes out of all that fabric because there's no way to like punch it. I think you're like actually supposed to punch the fabric out of it to do the grommet, but I don't have one of those machines and I'm also too weak to do that by hand. So I just trim a little hole through all the layers and then I put the grommets through and then obviously I hammer them in and then I can't decide if I'm going to leave my apartment to hammer them in or not. It's during the day, so I feel like no one can get mad at me, but it is pretty loud. So we'll see what I end up doing if my neighbors get mad. I might go to a parking lot somewhere. But I'm going to do that. There's four on this side, four on this side, four on the front of the bodice, and four on the other side. And this is the hardest part. So I'm just excited to be done with this. It is now 9.30 at night, but I have the grommets in place. I've cut all the holes. I have not hammered the grommets in because they are so loud and it takes me a really long time and it's super annoying. So I have my corset over there sitting underneath books because it is not working with me the way that I need it to. It's really frustrating me and I'm hoping it's gonna turn out right, but I have this done and next I am going to start on the cuffs, I think. I now have my cuff pattern on the fabric that I want to use for the cuff, but this cuff goes pretty far up on the arm. It's kind of more like a, oh, I don't know why I started that sentence. I don't know what they're actually called, but the things that are bracers, is that what they're called? Where they're like made out of leather or whatever. Um, so it goes pretty far up. It almost goes all the way to my elbow. So I don't want it to be that high. I want it to be about half that because if you can see on the pattern, it's really just at the wrist and then I want the like cording or kind of like the sleeve-ish ribbon part to be longer and kind of drapey. I'm hoping that I'm still gonna do that. I'm just not sure of the logistics still. So I think, I mean, it looks fine, but I'm really not sure how it's gonna lay just because of the way that the situation up here is. We'll see. It looks like it lays pretty in the picture, but you never know until you actually do it. So. I am going to start on the cuffs and I'm gonna make them about, I think right at half of this size. Okay, now I have my pieces cut out. I have the pattern and I have the part that will go and touch my arm. And then I have the part that will be facing forward. They are right sides together because I'm going to sew all around the edges and then I'm gonna flip them inside out through the little gap that I leave and then stitch that together. And then I'll do the same with the other one. And then I think I'm gonna throw some stitches through probably this way just so that they stay up on my arm and they don't want to scrunch. I'm not sure if they're going to scrunch but I'm just going to throw a few stitches vertically so that way they don't because obviously there's not boning in this part but I think that the grommet should be enough but I just don't want them to slide like slide and bunch up on my wrist. So I'm going to do that and then I think I'll probably put small grommets in this one just because it's not very thick so I have some like real tiny grommets that I'll put, I'll probably put three grommets through them. I think that that should be enough. If not, I'll do four on each one. And then I think next is the, I don't know if I wanna do any detail on this. I probably won't just because the bodice will be so detailed. I don't think I need any detail on the cuff. Also it's a pattern. And then I'm going to do the two straps with the little, um, with the little cap sleeve, gosh, oh my goodness. And I'm going to put those on the straps and the straps will also need grommets as well as the top of the bodice right here where the straps will connect over top. And then the last thing I'll have to do is go to Joann's and buy the little like ribbon. It's not ribbon, I'm gonna buy the stuff that's like thicker. It's almost like a strap for a tote bag, if that makes sense. It's like the, the like woven kind of um, ribbon that's thicker just so that it will pull nicer on my arm. I feel like the, um, 
like regular ribbon might gap or like be too thin. I want something that has like a little bit of structure so that it falls the way that I want it to, or at least that's what I'm hoping that that's gonna do. Again, I've never worked with anything like this, so I'm really not sure, but I'm kind of thinking in my head that that's the way it would go. So again, maybe I should have used the pattern, actually bought the pattern and then used that, but this is my first time and I'm not putting a whole lot of stock into it. I just go to Renaissance festivals for fun. I'm not trying to be period accurate or have the most structurally integral, most structurally sound costume of all time. All I need is to be able to wear it casually every once in a while. So I think I'm doing pretty good so far. I've just finished my cuffs, just like the very basic. They don't have any grommets or anything, but I just sewed them so that the back and front are obviously stitched together. And then I just threw one stitch down the middle because I think it's kind of ugly, actually. I didn't think it was gonna look that bad, but I guess I could have done it in black. Now that I think about it, that would have been awesome, but hindsight's 2020. So yeah, they fit pretty perfect right there. So um, once I put the grommets in this, then I will get that part and I'll put the strands on there. I think that there's five on the pattern, but I don't know if five are gonna fit on here. That doesn't look super, no, it, it should, it should. Five should be fine. So I'm excited for that. That was really easy. All it needs is grommets and those um, ribbons and then that will be great. So now we're gonna move on to these straps and I'm gonna make the straps out of this fabric and I'm going to make the little cap sleeves. Why do I keep forgetting that? Out of the black, I think. So it's gonna be pretty simple and easy. All I'm gonna do is cut out two long strips of this and then stitch them kind of the same as this, flip them inside out and then see how long that they need to be. I don't really know how I'm gonna see how long they need to be. Lucy's coming over tomorrow, so I may get her to help me to see how long they need to be because that's kind of confusing on to measure on myself. I don't know, maybe I could use, I have these patterns for sleeves on the corset, but they're really long because they're supposed to actually like attach beneath the corset. So they're like super long sleeves because the course, they're just supposed to like stitch directly onto the corset. There's no grommets holding them. So I guess I could mark on these where I want them to sit and then only measure that far. We'll see if I'm able to do that. E who knows? Anyways, yeah, I'm just gonna make super long straps for now and then I'll probably measure them tomorrow. And then we'll stitch those up and we'll throw the grommets in them. And then tomorrow I'm going to Joanne's with Lucy and we will get the ribbons and then that will be the last step. I'm super duper excited to be done with this. I have cut four strips that are this size and this is going to be the cap sleeve. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch all along this curved edge. And honestly, I might, stitch down this edge too, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'm gonna stitch down this curved edge and then I'm going to flip it and probably iron it to make sure that it stays where I want it because I want it to sit pretty like straight out on my shoulder. I don't want it to be like crumpled kind of, I want it to be pretty structured. And then once I flip it inside out to where it's back to the shape, I am going to kind of bunch it, like almost pleat it a little bit so that it's the size of the strap that I need it to be because this is gonna be too long. This is probably like more than the strap is gonna be. So I'm gonna pleat it a little bit. That way it kind of sits like, not just like this on my shoulder, perfectly like that. It kind of sits like a little bit, a little bit bunched, but in a structured way. You'll see at the end what I mean. But anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna throw a stitch down the curve side on both of these together flip them inside out. And then whenever I stitch them into the straps, I'm going to put the straps face forward together. And in the middle of them, I'm gonna put the cap sleeve. My gosh, why do I never wanna remember what that's called? I'm gonna put the cap sleeve, you can't see, in between the two right sides facing together. I'm gonna put it in between. And that way, whenever this cap sleeve is already stitched up, once these two are together, they'll fold over. This is a terrible demonstration, but they'll fold over and that cap sleeve will be sandwiched in between them. So then whenever I put it on my shoulder, the cap sleeve will be sitting right in between, right there, how I want it. So it'll be strap and then cap sleeve. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do now. I have good news. <laughs> okay, I have, oh wow, awesome, okay. 
I have hammered all of the grommets into my corset. So that means I get to try it on now and see if it fits. I think it should fit. I'm just worried about this top part and the bunching. I still hate that. I'm hoping that when I put it on that that bunching will go away, but we will see. So now I get to try it on. Okay, the good news is the corset fits great. It's right where I wanted it to be on the sides and the back looks good. It's sitting well, but the front is doing the little like bunch over thing that I really didn't want it to do. And I was hoping when I put it on that that would just kind of go away. I'm not really sure why. But I'm thinking because I am going to have straps on it and they're gonna pull from about right here and right over here, I think that that will help a little bit. I am still thinking that this is gonna like, you see how it's sinking back behind? There's like that, this comes up and then there's like a little kind of ridge in there and I need it to pull up like this. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do about that. Also the fabric is sitting super weird if you can see that. So I'm hoping that when I pull it up with the straps, that that will sit differently too. I don't know, this is my first one with plain fabric and I'm kind of realizing that maybe that wasn't the go. So it's fine, I'm not upset with it. This is just a costume and it's just for fun, but yeah, it's not exactly how I wanted it, but I think that it's gonna do. It's actually better than I thought it was gonna be because I was really worried at the beginning that it wasn't gonna look good. So it's better than I thought, but it's not exactly what I wanted, but it looks nice with the rest of the costume, I think. So yeah, and then, hold on, let me put shoes on. Yeah, and then whenever I pull up the <laughs> under part, I think that that will look cool to have the checkered next to the checkered. I think it's gonna look good. So I'm fine with it. I'm okay with it. It's not my favorite costume I've ever made. Probably my blue one still is better than this one, but we're gonna keep going because I still wanna do the sleeves the straps and the cuffs and the little uh, ribbons on the sleeves. Oh, hey again, guys. It's been a few days. <laughs> I am coming to end this video because I have reached a stopping point at my corset where there's kind of no going back because I am slowly, and by slowly, I mean immediately as soon as I finished it, starting to hate it because I don't, the top of it, I think I showed a clip. It's, like I said, it's been a few days. And I think I showed a clip where the top of this will not sit right. It wants to bunch down. And I know Lucy um, told me, you know, you could just fold it over and then cut off that fabric and then hand stitch it closed. But I really don't want to do that because I don't like most of the corset. It's not something where I'm like, oh, I just have to salvage this one bit. So I don't like the trim. I just don't like the way that it looks. It looks kind of, kind of cheap, kind of, I don't know. I also don't like the way that it, finished on the sides. It just doesn't look good. I don't like, I don't like the bottom. It looks like a race car to me. Bad idea on my part. I also don't like that the back is checkered. I don't really like this fabric for like outside. I like that it was under the skirt. I thought that that was nice, but I don't like the trim. I don't like the, the fabric that I used. I don't like this fabric that I used. This was not good. I used the wrong kind of fabric. So everything about this is not what I wanted. So I'm just going to probably take it apart and reuse the boning and reuse the laces obviously and things like that um but I don't have that much money in this one because all of this fabric is like this was on clearance the black fabric was like super cheap and then this was pretty cheap too and like it hardly used any fabric so I'm not you know I'm not real cut up about it but overall I don't like this, but you know what? We're not giving up. I'm going to make another corset, so this will not be the last of me. <laughs> and I'm eating my words right now because remember earlier in the last video, whenever I was like, yeah, I have these corsets under control. I feel like I've gotten this down, like I can make the corset and I wanna challenge myself. So <laughs> I may regret saying that. These are pretty difficult for me to make, but yeah, overall, I'm not happy with how it turned out. Here's the final, and by final, I mean, I fit, I stopped halfway because I have all the sleeves and everything cut out. And I bought the like cording or straps or whatever for the sleeves. So I'm going to use that on a different corset. I just didn't want to put them on this one and waste it and just by trying to wear this. So I wasn't proud of it, so I'm not gonna wear it. 
and that's just where we ended up with that one. But that's okay because I went to RenFest yesterday and I already posted my vlog for it. And my friend Katie, it was her birthday and she made me something. She, at the last RenFest, I literally pointed out someone that had like a kind of a badge or a, I don't even know what you would call it, like a little flag off of their belt or something that held their pins and it was crocheted and it was so cute and I just loved it. And I love when people have lots of stuff on their belts and look what Katie made for me. It's like identical to what the person had on theirs. So she crocheted those two little straps so I can put my pins on there. That is so precious. She did such a good job too. Katie is so talented, but overall, not happy with my corset, super happy with my little pin holder for my belt. And yeah, this is definitely not the last vlog of me sewing. So don't be disappointed that this one didn't turn out. And also I have to tell myself sometimes that's just how it is. Like I don't really follow the pattern. I don't really know how to sew. I'm just doing it by learning. And honestly, you have to mess up at times. So I did. And while it is disappointing because I put a lot of effort into it, I learned from it and now I know what not to do. So it's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna evolve. We're gonna grow from that. So no problems. And we're going back to RenFest. So I have something to look forward to and something to motivate me to keep sewing. So yes, I just have to redo the corset and I have the supplies for it, or I have some of the supplies for it that I intended to use for this one, but I am going to go get different fabrics and really focus on the structural aspects of it because that's where this one failed me most. So yeah, overall, learning experience. I'm not happy with the corset, but I am happy with what I got out of it. And we're going to keep going. I think the next video is going to be the vest and that one didn't take too long, but that one also had some stumbles. So we're learning, we're, we're growing. And I really appreciate the one person who left a, a couple of tips on my last video. Um, my making my Renfest costume. I really appreciated that. So I'm excited and we're going to keep going. So thank you guys for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I can't believe that um, enough people cared to watch the last video. I was so excited. So I can't wait. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.